Hello, Hello we're, we're Most, most Charmly. Charmly. Today we're going to discuss a bit about Clip Studio Paint and how it's becoming a very confusing slash elusive subscription-based product. So Clip Studio Paint is re a really good program. We've had Clip Studio since it was called Manga Studio 5. Yeah. <laughs> and we got it, you know, fries or something. It was crazy. You know, it's always been dependable and things have changed. So yeah. it works very well and has improved so much in so many aspects. It's capable of animation, manga, comics, digital illustrations, and book publishing. It even has plenty of 3D models and assets at your disposal. It is regarded as a professional grade program in Japan. Manga Kai is the standard. It offers a great community and a cool yeah, and cool contests sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it's got a lot going on for it. It's it's a pretty cool program. You know, yeah. we we it was it was something we always highly would recommend to other people because it was yeah. it had you know so many three heavy hitters. You know, animation, comics. Yeah, and, and 3D modeling. And yeah, just, I mean, you could pretty much do everything. It was kind of like yeah. you didn't want Photoshop or Adobe products because you're like, hey, this is a one-time purchase, you know? And that's exactly it, you know? For that, for its single one-time purchase product, it is a program we have always, you know, been happy with. So, you know, it was the best alternatives since Photoshop, really, you know, to that level of capability. So, yeah. yeah. It, it was just a no-brainer when we when we got it, it because yeah. it just it was so it's so good in that way. Yeah. You know, it's the only program I can think of that can draw and could paint in vectors in that in that, that specific a, way. Yeah, huge selling point that it actually is able to complete vector layers and the way that it actually allows you to draw vector layers, especially if you're inking. Oh, nothing like it. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah. So now things have kind of gotten, you know, complicated. So mm -hmm. in a single email sent out to everyone who uses Clip Studio, um, they gave us a graph that doesn't really answer anyone's questions and, it, you know, instead posed more questions, really. It really did. So it... It was kind of strange because it was like, okay, so you're going to have support for 1.12 yeah, until it, 3. So when is three coming out? How long do we have? Ooh. It it just it this email it, it, for anyone who doesn't didn't know or yeah. it, it basically announced that Clip Studio would be changing into a su subscription based program. Yeah. So you know it also came with you know you know the colorful graph, but this <laughs> is it had the thing it had no set dates just only years on this graph and and the biggest thing. Uh, and for for me, and I'm sure for many other people, just there was no financial information of what yeah. these changes, you know, may even entail. It, it was very big. It, it was, was, and the only year that they actually brought up was um, uh, the beginning of 2023. You know, okay, early 2023. This is when the major changes will happen. It was kind of like, okay, what does that mean? Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. You know, times are, are just increasingly difficult for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, groceries are, are expensive and everything, everything is pretty much expensive. Cost of living and it's worldwide. Yeah. It's, it's a hard time. So it just kind of hits when, you know, it just it hits everyone who bought Clip Studio, you know, who from those who recently, very recently purchased it to those who have had it for a long time. Yeah. You know? It, it just was like a what moment. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't say why Clip Studio may be changing their business model. They could be offering more things, you know, maybe 3D things or, you know, more other assets new assets. And yeah. Stuff, yeah. So maybe they're, you know, offering new things and, and need the money to fund it. They could be at a loss having sold their products at a one time purchase model. Yeah. We have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. You know, we have, yeah, Celsius, you know, the parent company did this in a really. Problematically. It was, yeah, it was very problematic, you know. They created more questions and gave very little explanations, you know. Uh, first of all, when when is Clip Studio Paint 3 coming out? And how, if you mention Clip Studio Paint 3, you know, how do, how do you not already know, you know, what's going to be happening and when? You know, as a business, you know, business-wise, you've always got to be prepared for years ahead and, and have a roadmap to the next three years, at least, I think. You know, for, for them to, to be vague and honestly ghost the world after dropping all of this on its consumers, you know, definitely makes them appear 
untrustworthy and shady and and you know and now what what under you know it's crazy so what what we understand about you know what's going on is really just our opinion like right now so we just really want to let you know that we have ideas and we have a concept but you know this is just an assumption of us as artists who use this and we yeah. have an idea of know? what's going on we yeah. don't know we don't know we don't know <laughs> so yeah you know we legally have to say hey we have no idea what's going on so just take this with a grain of salt this is an opinion okay so just have to say that so here we go yeah yes they know exactly what they're doing you know in fact this had to have been part of a plan and must have been going on for years maybe right now just ghosting everyone or seeing what's happening they just want to feel the public out and see what's you know what the reaction is and then they want to in turn you know figure out how to react as a business so this is plan a it must be you know it could be yeah right (laughs) yeah i mean i mean right this is just our opinion so there's definitely a shift you know that we're seeing so many companies have been you know switching their business model to subscriptions you know yeah it's really kind of like okay i guess everybody needs you know needs to have that consistent income as a business but you know there's some really frustrating you know frustrations and downsides to it you know um one of the glaringly obvious is that what you purchase really isn't yours yeah that's the biggest yeah ah (laughs) you don't own anything you're just you know constantly paying to use something that in some cases companies know how to and can be they know how it can be like a a necessity like or you know you end up relying on it and you know they're sort of realigning to that fact that they're taking advantage of that fact that you end up relying on it and and it, it can be becomes a necessity yeah it, in a ways because it's actually part of what you do as an individual gra- you know as a graphic artist as an illustrator as a concept artist anything you know when you're using a program like that it does become a necessity and you may feel you know stuck using that program that yeah. you've just gotten very yeah. you know used to yeah we've we've heard a lot of people commenting and seen a lot of people commenting on the fact that as a professional everything's stuck in you know the clip studio format you've got years and years of work and it's like well it's now a necessity so you know yeah it's hard when it becomes a subscription model because you know once again if it's a necessity financially you really can't plan for the future you know you know there is something bigger going on here um there is a reason why clip studio parent you know you know paint you know patrons are 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 enraged and frustrated right now you know there are other alternatives you know for us we just want to bring that up you know for Clip Studio, if you're looking for something instead of Clip Studio, so yeah, there there are other options out there. It, yeah. They might not have the three things at once that Clip Studio had, or True. the same capabilities. Yeah, uh, it's it's different, but there's a lot of options out there, you know. And some of those examples that we have found are Sketchbook, Art Rage, GIMP, a Medibang Paint, Paint Tool SA, SAI, Corral Paint. And trust us, this is just the beginning of the options. It is really overwhelming to think about. So we're going to focus on just two that we highly recommend and will work with to, you, you know, know that it'll yeah. work with your computers, your OS, and even some tablets in that case. So, you know, the first we're going to talk about is Krita. Um, Krita is all over YouTube and, and, you know, social media right now is the best option. So just wanted to fill you in on a little bit of it so. yeah it is actually really good it's it is. it's a free open source software mm-hmm. so yeah it's a great alternative to clip studio paint yeah. and it's it currently is not working on ipad it is however compatible with uh linux and it's great on fedora yeah and the more you know mainstream stream windows you know android oh, yeah. and mac even m1 or you know m1 max with the apple arm chips yeah you know, it's originally a derivative of GIMP, um, and in 2009, it became something so much more. Um, now it, it is now its capabilities. You know, it has the capability uh, yeah. of like any you know pro workflow. Yeah. You know, you can throw you can at it. You can really work with it at full pro level. You know, there, nothing's hindering it. You know, honestly, um, if you really want to know, um, l- look up David Ravoy. 
um, and he's, check out his comic, yeah. um, Pepper, Pepper and, and Carrot. Carrot. <laughs> you know, he's the, he's the best to look at for Linux. Yeah, he's amazing. Or he's, Krita, I mean, Krita. sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, he uses Linux. He yeah. uses Fedora right now. You know, the links are in you know are are below. So I just wanted you know, Trevion Monsieur Revoy. Fantastic, fantastic work. So the next one, Affinity Designer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it works great on Mac OS, iPad, and Windows. It has vector graphics. It is a one-time purchase program. Its sister applications, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher, are part of the Affinity Trinity. So they kind of like, as one, would basically be a true uh, um, alternative to Clip Studio Paint, or even Photoshop for that matter. So. Um, the subscription costs $54.99 for a lifetime access uh, to macOS Windows platforms. Um, it also has a version for iPads that costs $19.99. Um, if you can wait until November because they have a Black Friday deal and a Cyber Monday deal, um, so it's it's at a much lower price. Yeah, and it, it, it's a one-time purchase yeah. kind of thing, so mm -hmm. that subscription is for just like, it's just for uh, one of their programs, so Affinity Designer alone is $54.99. Yeah. Um, yeah, and all the other the other two will have their own pricing scale, so um, there is a big difference. It's a huge learning curve because um, Affinity's UI is very unique and will take some getting to used to because it is very different than anything you, else you've ever seen or had to work with. But once you really get it and figure it out, it, it becomes very intuitive. Yeah, so. and you can use vectors, and yeah. they have a lot of you know cool things that you can add to it. Yeah, they they have a very similar community as Clip Studio yeah. as well. I mean, most of most graphic software must at this point. It's you can download packets of brushes and backgrounds for vectors and, and raster layers. There's many options with uh, you know. Affinity products. So Serif, which is the company that makes Affinity Designer, also just a repeat Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher are excellent too. Um, the next one we bring up is Procreate. Yes, Procreate. It's it's a great software to use. Mm -hmm. It is only a one-time purchase of $19.99, and that's it. That's all you pay for, and um, yeah. so it's just that one-time purchase. It's only compatible on iPads. Yeah. We include this because Krita isn't on iPad yet. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can do a lot with it, but it does have some limitations with file size depending on what your iPad RAM can put out. Yeah. So we, we've used it to make a lot of our comics. You know, it was a learning curve and it makes a great sketching tool. Yeah. So it's not exactly a desktop tool, you know, kind of replacement, uh, depending on what you want to use it for. So yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> But to truly use it, you know, it, to its full potential, you will have, you know, you'll have to get an M1 or greater iPad. So, and that's a big purchase to deliberate on. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Procreate is a really great tool to use. It is. It is. Um, Sketchbook uh, is Sketchbook Paint or, or Paint a Tool SAI are also really great if you prefer for tablets. In conclusion, a little bit about what this is doing to the morale of digital artists and animators who, who rely on CSP or Clip Studio Paint. We are frustrated and angry because we feel lied to and misled. The supporters slash consumers of CSP are being seen as a dollar sign and not a culture or a community or even a person. Ultimately, we're really feel like we're being neglected again for some other self-serving purpose and it's really sad yes a company must be able to pay their employees a good wage that's so important and we cannot escape that the company's business plan is what lets us all enjoy that specific product but we think it could be done more constructively for both parties yeah this is an idea we, we have, and we hope people can hear it, especially you at CSP or Clip Studio Paint Celsius. So CSP, you know, should make people pay for the license, and that and that product should be should be yours. You know, we when you pay own for it. it, yeah. So in in other words, you know, when you pay for something, you you should own it. Mm -hmm. it it's kind of 
as an example, it's kind of like buying a, a, a computer and every time, you know, it updates or it has a new, you know, security update yeah, or anything of that nature. Yeah, any yeah. anything like that, it, it you'd have to pay $150 for it. Yeah. And it makes you kind of think, "Oh, I maybe shouldn't have bought that kind of computer." Yeah, right. And it's kind of it kind of feels iffy. So yeah. um it 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 shimmies with your security, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we don't disagree with, you know, well, Clip Studio, you know, should have we should be able to purchase the base program and its license. But these upgrades that we have to pay a subscription for, that might not be the, the best way to deal with this. We think that the individual yeah. should be able to purchase and own that base model license of the program. You know, that's without saying. But then every upgrade should be dealt with like a DLC in a video game. If the user needs that specific upgrade, then they are given the option and, you know, to upgrade it. Yeah, and all you know? upgrades could be treated as like a modular piece of the original program you already own. Exactly. Like it, say, you know, you buy the, the base illustration, you yeah. know, digital painting illustration program and you can buy the animation software if you want to get into that. Yeah. Or you can buy... You know the 3D modeling part yes. to to use that. Exactly. That would that would, would really you know we wouldn't mind putting our money into it if yeah. you know we wanted to use it. Something we know yeah. it's capable of doing, you know. And if we need it, we'll buy it. Yeah. You know that's actually I believe we believe. Or want to try it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know you can try it. You can deal with it. I mean, hey, give give it a trial and then okay, here you go. Exactly. Deal with it like DLC. Give it a little demo. If you like it, hey purchase it yeah it's so. it's kind of painful talking about a program we really like to use yeah and kind of talk speak negatively about it because yeah. we actually this is a program that a lot of people even us would recommend to others yeah because of the one-time purchase option of it mm -hmm. it, it it was great in that aspect so it, it kind of feels very uncomfortable it's hard to talk about yeah and and we want this to be you know we want to help people. Yeah. <laughs> we want to. We want to let people know that we do want to be positive about everything. Yeah. You know, in that way. And hey, it's not sappy. It really isn't because you know, people need help, and we want to do that for everyone. So this is a very difficult video for us to make. Yeah. Um, and of course, it's very controversial because it's very personal to so many people. It's created some major rifts for a lot of people. So. In the future, we're going to be creating videos that are going to emphasize and, and be specific how-tos for Affinity Photo um, and uh, Krita. Um, we're going to make uh, Krita specific videos, Affinity Photo video uh, specific videos on how to make your workflow super similar to Clip Studio Paint, how to create brushes, how to import, you know, everything you need to make things feel a lot better for you as a user. If you actually want to stop using Clip Studio Paint or don't have the option to purchase Clip Studio Paint, we want to really help people out and give them more options. Yeah. That's you the whole have point. other options. <laughs> yes. So stay tuned. We're going to, you know, do our best. <laughs> yeah. So. Moss Charmly out. Moss Charmly out. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. Bye.